the Lord be with you and a warm welcome to you from a rather windy rectory garden this week from all of us here at Paris Court with Kilbride. Well, as you can see, the autumn has arrived. Every day there are hundreds, I'm sure, of leaves falling off our chestnut tree here in the garden. But everything is as it should be. And even as we walk down the path in Paris Court in the, the driveway into the estate, the valley that lies beneath the sugar loaf uh, every week you can see that the trees are changing their colour so we're entering a really beautiful time of year and so you're welcome to join me this morning for our short time together uh, most recently I received a really gorgeous card uh, from somebody who was thanking uh, me for these little services and it, it means the world to be quite honest with you because once they go off and out you're not quite sure where they're going so let's just say I pray that this time together today is of benefit to you uh, in whatever high winds you're in <laughs> in your life at the moment may it be a place of calm in any storm and with this in mind we pause for just a moment as we open in prayer
the little scripture reading that we have today is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. And it's a couple of lines that I came across during the week. It is not tying into the scriptures that we have in our churches today at all. But I was greatly moved to be reminded of these words and I dug down a tiny bit deeper beneath them. And I hope that they will be of benefit today. In these words, Jesus asks for his disciples and us today to come at prayer from a completely different angle. How often these days do we pray from a place of fear or frustration? Um, you've heard the saying, there are no atheists in foxholes. It's often true even of us who believe in God and who are in constant contact with him, that it's only when everything goes belly up that we really desperately pray. And that's the word we should be thinking of. We're praying in desperation. And today in that short verse, Jesus is asking us to do something completely different. He's asking us to change our way of being as we pray, to change the place that we pray from. What he is saying is, when you pray, don't be praying from a place of lack. Be praying from a place that already believes that what you are asking for has happened. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, why would he be doing this and what exactly does this mean? Well, if I can offer this small explanation, I hear a lot of people these days in all the different things I come upon talking about manifestation, talking about manifesting and the energy that we put out is reflected back to us. If we are to think that if we pray from a place of trust and faith, which is what Jesus is asking us to do, trusting and having faith in the fact that the process has already begun. And let's not forget that God knows what we're about to pray before we even pray it. If we can come from that place, then what happens within our internal structure, within our internal mechanism, is we begin to experience what it might feel like if what we are asking for came true. If you like, it's meeting the Christ halfway. I firmly believe, and this is only my opinion, that Jesus healing the people he met in his life only took place because they met him halfway. That's not to say that he couldn't do it all by himself, but their intentions were that they really desperately wanted to be healed, and more importantly, they believed that he could do it. If we trust that he can do it in our lives, then when we ask in prayer, we are actually saying, instead of saying, oh dear Lord, please help me with this, that or the other. Or for an example, dear Lord, please give me the courage to stand up in, in, in front of these people and say what I need to say. Say just that as an example. Instead of saying that, we're saying, thank you Lord, that you are with me, and that I am already receiving the courage that's needed to stand up in front of those people and say what I have to say. We're praying from a place that believes that the action is already happening. And what happens within ourselves if we do that is we start to experience the
the emotions or everything connected with that way of being. So all of a sudden, you're not standing up uh, from a place of fear. You're actually standing up from that place of courage yourself. You're meeting the Christ halfway. You'll remember at the pool of Bethesda, he said to this man who had been unfortunately lying on a mat for a very long time, do you want to be healed? So when we're praying, we need to want to believe that everything that comes from our mouths or from our hearts is A, already known by God, and B, he springs into action or has already sprung into action in the answer or fulfillment of the prayers that we are asking of him. Wherever you are today and whatever you're going through, if you are talking to God as a resolution to a problem that you might have, first open your heart to believe, to really want to believe that he has this. And secondly, thank him for already resolving the problem, even before the outcome has finally come to you.